Hey guys, it's that time of day. It's time to get fit and have lots of fun and work a little bit on flexibility, something I really need. Um, and today I have a good buddy in the house doing a little yoga with me. Susie, I'm so, I'm so glad to have you here. Thank you. You've been trying to get me here forever. Yes. Glad to be here. Susie Cat, and your last name is? Dismukes. Dismukes. A Cajun, Cajun name we were talking about. Oh, um, weird. Susie and I go back a long way. She was my neighbor when my little Gracie, who's 16, was a baby. That's right. I remember when you brought her home. And we, you might remember Susie from Susie Groovy Garden. She was one of the sponsors of my hikes. Guard, gardening will hurt your back, won't it? Yes. Um, yes. Well, tell everybody, let's do some shoulder shrugs just to warm up a little bit, and then we're going to turn over to Susie in a second. But um, we've got some pictures of things that you like to do and a little bit about where do you work now? Well, I've got a class at the Glowing Body, mm -hmm. and that's in Happy Holler. I love Happy Holler. I do, too. And it's, it's the grooviest. It's in place. It you is, know? and it's the grooviest little studio. Oh, it is neat. And I'm teaching a couple of classes at Bullman's Gym. Yeah, I know. And that's in Bearden. Right. And I do private classes too. And I grab, see, when Susie was my neighbor, this is with your hubby, you had a dog named China that was like that that dog right there, right? right? Yeah. yeah, she was a Chalvador and she weighed 50 pounds and it was hard to travel with her. Mm. So we loved her, but when she passed, we said we wanted a miniature version. Right. So we got this Pomeranian. Aww. Aww. <laughs> Cute, so you're into yoga and you're also, don't you, I think you have a picture of you with a motorcycle. That's right. right. I started okay. riding this past year, mm -hmm. or this year, actually. I finally got on it. I took the class last year. Right. The and you said one of the ladies that you do yoga with, that yoga's helped her uh, with some issues that with, with riding. So yoga can help a lot of different issues. Exactly. Right? Right. There are poses you can do to focus on helping you with bicycling or motorcycling um, or anything that you do. Right. Okay, well, that was an... Um, Nice guy. Y'all lived in Florida for a while, we right? We did. Yeah, we got moved married, back. moved to Florida, and yeah. we got, we're got. we so happy to be back home. Yeah. And, yeah. Good. and you're in kind of south, we Knoxville, are, east, east, south, south east, east. East Knox County. Yeah. The other side of the Holston River. Yeah. Beautiful area. I cut you there to go over to Panther Creek, Morristown yes. area that way. Lots of grass and lots of cows. Well, um, <laughs> I'm selfishly having Susie on, too, because I really need to do some more yoga. Uh, hike and bike, and a lot of us do that but we become inflexible or balanced. So take me through like a wake up, warm up type of thing. Okay. All right. So typically in the, well, let's go down to our mats. Okay. Typically in the morning, you know, you're dragging yourself out of bed. This right. is the best time to do a little yoga. Mm -hmm. So child's pose in a wide leg, uh, knees are as wide as the mat and the toes are touching in okay. the back, flat toes. Sit back on your heels or as far back as you're comfortable going, but don't strain your knees. And just place your forehead on the mat, reach forward, and just breathe deeply and connect with your breath. Half of yoga is breathing. We so tend with, to hold our breath all the time. Yeah, we tend to hold our breath. And so breathing, well, I mean, you can't live without breathing, right? So we, we want to, with every move, we want to breathe in and then breathe out. And take your time and move slow. So inhale up and then walk over to your right and reach through your left fingertips all the way down to your left hip. Press your left hip down to your foot as much as you can and try to let your forehead touch the floor. Breathe in deeply to your left hip. A couple of times. Keep stretching. Pull your navel to your spine. I can feel my shoulder. It's a good stretch for the shoulder too. Awesome stretch. Inhale up and let's walk it over to our left. And we'll do the same thing. Just reach through your right fingertips. Press your right hip down towards your heel. Press your, place your forehead on the mat. Just breathe deeply into your right hip. Exhale. Inhale, exhale, on your next inhale, let's come up, walk back to center, and back to the center, let's do one more child's pose, just stretch it out, and relax your shoulders, and 
inhale it up to tabletop. And in tabletop, we're going to do cats and cows. Okay. So we start with our toes flat. Tilt your, pel your, your hips up and drop your navel toward the mat. And look up for cow. Inhale. For cat, curl your toes. Tilt your pelvis under. Arch your back. Turn your head down and exhale. And you got into this because your back was bothering you, right? And do cow. Yes, I had to start doing yoga because my back was killing me from moving. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then cat, curl your toes under. And yes, I, when I we get moved tight with um, gardening sometimes and yard work. So this would be yes. something I need to do at least once a week. Ow, uncurl your toes. Up, inhale. Curl your toes again and then arch your back for cat. Exhale. One more time, cow. Very helpful. This is really helpful with your back. And yes, gardening. Do this before and after you garden and you won't be as sore. Now on this last one, let's push our hips up to the ceiling for downward facing dog, Adho Mukha like Svanasana. <laughs> Start out with up on your toes. Lift your navel to your spine. Press your hips to the ceiling. Breathe in deeply. And then one heel drops and then comes back up and then the other. Let's just do this walk the dog, that's what we call it. Until one leg is tighter than the other. Yes, it becomes a lot of body awareness from doing yoga. Find your problems. So now we're gonna try to stretch both heels all the way to the mat. If they won't go all the way to the mat, that's okay. What we wanna try to do is straighten the legs. If you can't straighten the legs and they're still bent, that's okay too. Keep pressing into the floor with your palms. Lift your armpits and spread your shoulder blades apart. Breathe deeply. Lift your navel to the spine and press your hips higher to the ceiling. Pull your kneecaps up and work your heels down to the mat. Just keep breathing deeply. Keep pressing. Inhale and let's walk the hands back to the feet. Some of these I can tell that you're strengthening and stretching too. You know, I can tell my shoulders are engaged. Exactly. That's supposed to be a resting pose, but it is mm -hmm. also not an easy pose at all times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is Uttanasana, and it's just a forward fold, but let's let's put a slight bend in our knees. Okay. Let your neck be loose. Let your head swing left to right, and then swing your body left to right. Just sort of relax and let everything go a little bit. And then on the next inhale, we're going to roll up slowly to standing. Inhale as you come up. Roll your shoulders back and then find your good strong Tadasana we did earlier with your toes together, heels apart. <sighs> nice deep breath. So that's a good warm up sequence. Mm -hmm. Just a little warm up. You don't have time for anything else. Just wake up, do that. Or mm -hmm. do that before you garden. Do it after you garden. Right. That alone that, that is will, something. That will, every time I paint or do something, yes. you know, reaching over and not thinking about it, that would be good. Okay, yes. we're like, is this going into tree something? Tree pose? Yes. Or? Okay. Let's do a balancing pose Alrighty. because balance is so important. No matter mm -hmm. what your age, if you have a hard time with balance and you're worried about standing on one foot, you can just grab a hold, put, well, not grab a hold, but place your hand mm -hmm. against the wall. Right. The leg that we're going to stand on right. needs to be the hand right. against the wall, the same side, mm -hmm. right? So, for those of us who want to be brave and try without yeah, a wall. Yeah, you can have a chair next to you, too. You yeah, can do that. Yeah, would work. Mm -hmm. And uh, you could see Missy falling, but I'm going to try it. <laughs> okay. i got to concentrate. Okay. So, Vrikshasana is tree pose, and we start in Tadasana. Okay. So, the first thing we do is ground all four corners of both feet into the floor. Pull your knees to the midline. Tilt your pelvis under navel to spine to establish our core strength and stability. Now try to find a focal point in front of you, something on the wall that you can just focus on for your balance. 
while you keep this standing leg, the left leg is going to be our standing leg, so it's going to be strong. The right knee is going to bend, turn it out to the side. Now, inhale, lift the foot up and place it against your calf. You want to go a little deeper into the pose. Reach down with your right hand, take your right ankle. Place your foot against your left thigh, inner thigh. Press the thigh to the foot and the foot to the thigh. So you've got this pressing in there. And the navel comes to the spine. This gives you your stability. Hands come to your heart. So inhale, you can free up if you feel stable enough. Oh yeah, it's tougher. Down the back as you reach up. For the final part of the pose, grow your branches. And maybe you want to look up, which definitely throws off your balance. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you're really balanced. And to come out of the pose, bring the hands back together. We do everything with breathing. Gently. Now, if you all didn't try that, it looks so easy, but it's not. <laughs> The Especially walls. each side. This is going to be the telltale sign is going to the other side. My right side's my weird leg, so it's always hard for me. But um, we all seem to have that, and then it becomes aware. You mm -hmm. become aware right. of it through doing weaker. these poses. So we don't want to leave the other side out, so right. ground the right foot, bend the left knee. Pull this leg straight, the right standing leg straight, the hip in. Tuck the pelvis and pull this navel into the spine. Lift the foot. Stable enough. Press the foot to the thigh and the thigh to the foot. Inhale your arms up if you feel stable. Don't forget your focal point with your eyes. And you can touch down like I do every once in a while if you're okay too. struggling. As long as you're trying. Yeah. Trying is everything. And grow your branches. And finally, if you feel good, and smile. My tree is <laughs> my tree is blowing in the wind. Mine is too. <laughs> Let's go back. Inhale. Exhale. Your hands to your heart. Forward. Slowly and gently put your foot down. Oh. And back to Tadasana. That's good. <sighs> wow, it works off the ankle muscles too. It know? works a lot of weird a things lot. that you don't usually use. Yes often that we stand around on one leg. Right, but do that in the morning, <laughs> brush your teeth. Exactly. All right, so next is mountain something? Uh, Virabhadrasana 2. Okay. Are you familiar with warrior? I think I am. Yes. Yeah. Okay, now I remember talking first too that mountain pose, is that something that you do too? I don't know if it's yeah. called mountain pose. But, yes, okay. Tadasana, we did that earlier when we right. came up from the warm up. Mm -hmm. So that's a pose we move back to often mm -hmm. in yoga. It's sort of a just grounding, get yourself back to start pose. Right. So let's move to the top of our okay. mat and take Tadasana. Toes together, heels apart. Okay. You can ground all four corners of the feet into the mat for Virabhadrasana two. All right. So with control and with breath, inhale your right leg up and step it back slowly and gently. Line up your heels. And you want your back toes out about 45 degrees. Okay. Your front leg is straight, your back leg is straight, and your hips are forward. Ooh, that's the hard part. Okay. Yes. Tilt your pelvis, navel to spine, shoulders back. I think this would help everybody, teenagers. Yes. With poor posture. Yes. It would. Now we're going to bend the front leg to a 90 degree angle, but you don't want your knee to go over your ankle. I mean, beyond your ankle, just right above it. Okay. So if you need your f need to spread your feet out farther mm -hmm. in order to get this leg at a parallel to the floor angle. All right. Let's open the arms up and out to the sides and look over your left fingertips for Virabhadrasana 2. I love this one. And now turn your torso to the to in front of you. Yes, turn your torso forward and tilt your pelvis under. And keep looking over your fingertips. That was kind of a wonky way to get into the pose, but this we're here, great, we made it. Great flexibility and also strength. And inhale deeply, lengthen your spine. 
exhale and fold a little deeper into the pose. We really want to get a work on that thigh. Turn both thighs outward. Rotate your thighs outward. Breathe deeply. Inhale, straighten the front leg. Bring your hands to your hips and step back to the front of the mat. Now we'll try to do it on the other side. Okay. Less wonky as I did the last one. So <laughs> it's hard to do it slow, but that's what I need to work on. Okay. So ground your right foot, lift your left foot up, take your leg back, press your put your foot foot to the floor, line up your heels, legs are straight. Now turn your torso All right. to this direction. Right? Your hips mm -hmm. are straight, your torso's straight, bend your front knee. Move your feet apart if you need to, to get it to 90 degrees. And the arms come up, strong arms like you're holding two buckets of water on each hand. Look over your right fingertips. Breathe in. Navel to spine. Tuck the pelvis under and drop the shoulders. Inhale. As you exhale, go a little deeper into the pose. Rotate the thighs outward. On the next exhale, straighten the front leg, turn the feet to the side, hands to the hips, and then walk, or you can hop your feet together. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do that very well. Now, I do some of those um, poses with my hikers. Like if you do a lunch break, I'll, we'll do a little bit of that because we just, I think our hips get really inflexible because we're always doing the same thing. Yes. Instead of opening them up. That's it does good help one. with opening the Okay, hips. I think we've got about six or seven more minutes. Chris will tell me in a second, but um, your classes are, no, we've got about nine more minutes, so we're good. Your classes are 45 minutes, hour? An hour to okay. hour and a half. So this is a mm -hmm. condensed version. Right. And we would move mm -hmm. more. But um, so in that case, let's right. take it to the floor. Okay. Let's work on our back a little bit, strengthening, mm -hmm. because we sit in chairs all day at desks, most right. of us, and we have weak upper backs. Mm -hmm. And so let's come to the mat, come to a tabletop, okay. and then come to your forearms. Uh, put your elbows right below your shoulders, and then clasp your fingers together. S curl your toes under, come to a forearm plank, mm -hmm. lift your navel up, Keep your butt down though. We want to flat back. That looks great. Breathe in. Press your heels back to the back wall behind you. Keep pressing into the floor with your forearms and your wrists. And press your shoulders down away from your neck. Great, Inhale. Great for just all your core muscles, right? <laughs> it is a great core exercise strengthening the core and then let's drop the knees uncurl the toes okay and then just lower your hips and place your hands on the mat oh Susie this is the one I need to do mark a physical therapist um, this is for my low back when it goes when it hurts I need to do this a couple this times is, a day yeah. this is great this is a modern this is Cobra mm -hmm. Bujangasana so focus on your toes bring your big toes together activate all ten toes into the floor Activate your legs so that they're off the mat. I mean, when you right. activate, bring your toes together and then s press into the floor. Activate your legs. Oh, yeah. But you want to relax your glutes. Okay. That leaves room for your lower back. Now lift your navel, lift your chest, and press into the floor with your elbows and lower your shoulders and give room for your neck. Look straight ahead and breathe and lift your chest as you exhale. Lift your legs. Act no, I mean, activate your toes on the floor. Activate your legs, but they're not coming off the floor. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Yeah. Uh, like that little bitty movement. Mm -hmm. And that little work right there is so good for your back. Exhale and lower your chest to the floor. I feel like it was kind of working that sacrum area. It does, mm -hmm. it does, this SI area. The next move is Salabhasana. It's similar. Mm -hmm. So bring your hands down beside your hips. Lift your, inhale your head up, your shoulders up, your feet up, your legs up, and finally your hands up. Look up and breathe. 
So you're balancing on your hips. And if this hurts your hips, you can put a blanket down and lay on a blanket before you do the pose. This strengthens your back muscles. It's good for your digestion and so many other things. They say 75% of our population is gonna have back issues right. a couple times in their life. Yeah, Affects probably from everybody. all that sitting, right? We're mm -hmm. not even made to sit. We're not even supposed to sit on our butt ever. So keep breathing. And then exhale and lower everything to the floor, your forehead to the mat, and just relax all your muscles. Deep breath in, bring your hands to your chest. Let's press up, and then let's roll over to our back and do Setu Bandha. Um, yeah, let's do a little child's pose, mm -hmm. that's always Good nice. Choice. Okay, for the last part, I'm gonna have our mats. We're gonna turn them a little bit to the side so you all can see what we're doing. Yeah, this so is a good idea. So we can go like this, like that, and you could do yours a little exactly. bit like this. Okay. For the cameras, we got about four more minutes. I know this is a mini version of what Susie normally does. I'm gonna turn this way, yeah. Okay. How's that? That's good. That okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for Setu Banda, you wanna lay on your back. So let's do this gently. Okay. So feet, flat curl your back over inhale and then lower yourself down one vertebrae at a time till you're flat on your back okay bring your feet flat below your hips on the floor Cur roll your shoulder blades under and then with an inhale press into the floor with your feet and lift your hips off the mat oh yeah Triangle, kind of like a triangle position, right? Sort of. Yeah, and uh, lift your hips up as high as you can, but relax your glutes. Press into the floor with your shoulder blades, your arms, and then try to bring your fingers together underneath your hips and bind your fingers underneath. Just press into the floor with your wrists, your arms, your feet. Relax your glutes. And then reach your chin to the ceiling. Keep your head on the floor, but just tilt your head back so that your chin goes toward the ceiling. This Breathe is, in deep. This is a good one. Yeah, it's very strengthening for your back, your thighs. Breathe in deeply. Now release your hands, bring them down out beside your feet again. Now come up on your toes. Okay. Take a deep inhale. As you exhale, lower one vertebrae at a time until finally your hips hit the floor gently. This is a good time to pull mm -hmm. a knee to the chest. And and one this, we've got about two more minutes, a little over two minutes, and this is something I know when I've had back problems too. This feels so good. I mean, even on the floor next to your bed at night. Or it does. Yeah, just to... And just pull your knees to your chest. And I love this rocking motion for mm -hmm. the SI. It's kind of hard with our mics, I know. Yeah. <laughs> but luckily, you don't have mics at home. This feels really good on my SI joint. Mm -hmm. Just roll back and forth. And for the final pose, have you heard of Shavasana? I've sure heard of it, know. but I don't know what it is. Shavasana <laughs> is corpse pose. OK. So basically, this is the pose where you just let everything go. So get in a comfortable position. Your hands are just out from your hips a little bit. You can windshield wiper your feet to relax your hips. Roll your shoulder blades under your back. Close your eyes. Relax mm. your jaw. Relax your tongue so that it comes away from your palate. Relax the skin on top of your head. Relax your eyes and your throat, your chest, your arms, your stomach. Let your hips feel heavy, your legs, your feet. Just breathe naturally. And as thoughts come, Try to attach them to little puffy white clouds and let them float away as you just lay here and relax in Shavasana. It's 
easy. I'm going to get so relaxed. I'm not going to close the show, but this has been great. And this so is the we best want to part. remind folks that uh, we're on on East Tennessee PBS, and um, y'all can tune in in the morning and also sometimes in the summertime, in the afternoon. But I'm going to let us just go to the end of the show, relaxing and getting that vertebrae like into the ground. I want to thank Susie. Thank for you, Missy. This has been great. You guys remember, this is part of fitness, uh, just a little core strength and also flexibility and balance. See you next time on Fit and Fun.